So many timers obsessed with something as I am with technology, there are going to be things people do that just bother you. And at the top of that list for me is how people manage their passwords. Whether you write them down in a notebook or make them all exactly the same, you're making a huge sacrifice on one of two fronts, convenience or security. If only there was a simple and free solution to give you the best of both worlds. So launching into the app, you'll start out right in the category screen. I do wish it would let you select where it opens to so I can have it take me straight to my logins. It will separate all of your different kinds of information into categories like credit cards, notes, and of course, logins. There's a search bar at the top and you can tap the plus to add a new item. When you do, it will let you select what kind you are adding, which is pretty self-explanatory. Having a look at how you input passwords, first you'll be asked for the name of the website. As you can see, there are a bunch of websites that can identify automatically, but if the one you want does not show up, you can still add it, it just won't know the web address unless you input it manually. Then you'll be asked for the username or email address, and of course that depends on what the website uses to log you in. Last but certainly not least, you'll enter your password or create a new one using their amazing password generator. Now once you've done that, it'll add it into your vault. If we tap on it again, you can see how you'll find the information when you need it. Now you'll be able to tap on the username or password to copy them to your clipboard, or you can just hit reveal to see the actual password itself. If we hit edit at the top, you'll of course be able to edit existing logins and also add more information like web addresses and even notes. Both of which are actually very useful, notes for storing things like security questions or whatever else you might need, and as far as web addresses are concerned, you'll want to add those in not just to get the little icon at the top, but also so one password knows which login to give you when you're using the extension that I'll show you in just a few minutes. Also, you'll be able to slide over on one of those from the list to copy the password. To the left is basically just where your favorites will show up, and you can add those for quick access if you want. Jumping into the settings, there are plenty of useful options, including where you can get to your 1Password account if you choose to sign up for a paid subscription. In general, is where you can change your font size and also enable Spotlight Search. When turned on, you'll be able to type in the name of a website into your phone's Spotlight Search and get a quick direct link to it within the app. Below that, you can add additional vaults. Security is a fairly important tab, of course, and you can change whether it locks immediately when you leave and also add a PIN. I believe what that lets you do is not have to enter your full password when entering the app. Instead, you'll be asked for a short PIN and your full password will be stored in iCloud Keychain. Now, I can't really say I recommend using this for two options. One, if your phone already has a fingerprint scanner, you can use Touch ID to get in so you already don't have to enter that password. And two, I don't really trust iOS Keychain because I've heard it's not horribly secure. So as far as 1Password security is concerned, obviously nothing's going to be 100%, but it does use bank level encryption to store all of your information, so it's going to be a lot better than using the notepad in your phone or even writing them down so anyone that comes into your house can walk right over and look at them. By the way, this is also where you can change your master password. Under sync, you'll be able to change where your vault is stored. Now you have a couple of options. If you pay for an account, it will be stored in 1Password servers, but if you have a free account, you'll need to sync it through a third-party cloud storage service. You can choose between iCloud and Dropbox, and you don't really have to worry about the security of either because it's all stored in a highly encrypted jumble of numbers that only one password knows how to read. So even if, for example, someone were to get into your Dropbox account, there would be nowhere for them to decipher the information that is stored. Now there's a browser built in the app, which you can use, but I don't think most people are replacing Safari anytime soon. Of course, it's probably the most secure option, and it's even easier than using the extension to input logins. Basically, when you're on a web page, all you have to do is tap the little key, and it will enter in the password and username for you right there. So when you're on a web page in Safari, you'll be able to enter your username and password with just a couple of taps. Simply tap the share button at the bottom, tap on one password, enter your master password, or use touch ID. Once you've done that, all of the logins associated with that website will show up, and that's why it's important to add the website into the login information. If you don't, it will not be able to show up because it won't know which one to give you. This is definitely one place where I see room for improvement. You think if it doesn't know which one to give you, it would just show you a list of all of your options, but instead your only option is to create a new login. Aside from that, the only other thing is there is a pro features pack, which will run you $10. For me, none of them are particularly useful, but of course you'll have to make that decision on your own. One thing to keep in mind is if you pay for a subscription, you will get all of these included. By the way, you do have 3D touch shortcuts from the home screen, which I always love to see. So in case I didn't make my point overly clear at the beginning of this video, I love password managers. It's easily one of the best changes I've made to my everyday life over the last couple of years, and I definitely recommend you start using one right now. As far as what one you should use, I can only speak from personal experience, and I've always used 1Password. That being said, I've heard great things about LastPass as well. As with anything, there's pros and cons to each service. If you're going to be using the mobile app alone, then both will work just fine for completely free. But if you're planning on using the desktop application, then you'll find LastPass is a bit cheaper. I still use a demo version of 1Password that I downloaded from my PC quite a while ago, but I believe that's no longer an option. 
Even so, I can only access the passwords from the demo application. I cannot add new ones. That I still have to do from the mobile app. So from what I've seen, you can get away with the free version of LastPass in the long term much easier, but I still prefer the way 1Password operates, so I'll be upgrading to the $2.99 a month subscription in the not too distant future. Anyways, thank you all so much for watching. If you have any questions, suggestions, or would just like to start a conversation, feel free to drop a comment down below. I post new videos every single Sunday, so I'd definitely like to see you back next week. But until then, 